Okay, this is part five in the series of Kolmogorov Complexity Using Prolog, uh, part of the Deconstructing Dembski series, where we are refuting uh, intelligent design. Okay, we've been using this genealogical database for Jesus in order to illustrate things, right? So we have a lot of begats here which say who is the parent of whom, right? We're being very politically correct and using uh, gender-neutral language here. Um, but then we've also seen we can use this to, if we just go compile the buffer here, we can use this to, uh, in essence, get more information out of Prolog than we put into it, right? We've only told who is the parent of whom here. But from this information, what we can do is we can, we can infer other things. Like, for example, grandparent, right? We can do grandparent like this. We get uh, parent kid. We get grandparent like this, right? And if we hit return, it starts enumerating all of the... Uh, parent, kid, and grandparent relations that there are in the database, right? Okay, so but here's the score, right? Typing this over and over again it will get very tedious, cumbersome, error-prone, whatnot. We just don't want to type these queries over and over again. And what's more, if you look at a big, long query like this, it's not immediately obvious to you that what we're doing is we're figuring out who the grandparent of kid is, right? I mean, if we did this for a cousin, it would be even more confusing, right? So there's an easy way to uh, to get around this. Prolog gives you a nice mechanism. So once you get a query that you like, okay, and that you know works, like we did for grandparent or we did for cousin, then what you can do is, is you can give a name to this query. So you don't have to type the whole thing over and over again. So let me show you how that works, all right? Basically, just... Uh, Cut and paste your query. Once you get your query the, the way you like it, right? Copy it into your buffer. Go into the editor. And we'll go to the end here. And then paste the query into the into the um, into the buffer. Now, there's a way to give a name to this. Let's give it the name grandparent, of course. Because that's basically what we've done, right? And now, in parenthesis here, what you do is you give the variables that you're interested in. So I'm interested in the grandparent, right? And then I'm interested in the kid, right? So this is the name of our query that we're doing, and these are the variables we're interested in. And then you use this funny symbol, okay? Colon and a minus sign. And it looks kind of weird. Uh, what it is, it's called the neck, all right? Just a weird name, right? And then usually what we do is we take the query that's there, we kind of indent it like this. We put on one line one of the begats and one line and another one of the begats, like this. Okay? So basically that's how it works. And now what we've done is we've given a name to this. So let's show you how, how this goes. So go ahead and compile the buffer. Compile buffer. Save it. And now, now that it's compiled down here, what we can do is is instead of typing this whole thing, all right, we can just type grandparent. Let me say grandparent. And return. And now we get all the parent grandparent relations that are or kid grandparent relations that are that are in the database. Alright? So this is uh, officially your first non-trivial program. Okay, notice all of these guys here are uh, you know, they, they look almost the same form, right? In, in, in fact, they, they begin with this name and then a parenthesis and, and things that you're interested in. But this one has a little neck cut, neck thing after it here, right? So, that's basically it. That's how you do it. Now, let's do another one. Let's, let's do uh, sibling, right? So, how to, remember how we did sibling? Sibling is um, if you share a parent, right? So, begat... Uh, parent, kid one, get two, right? So this, uh, oops, and remember, you're not equal to your, you're not equal to your sibling, right? There you go. So, uh, now we start enumerating all of the uh, the siblings that are in the database. Okay, so let's uh, let's do the same thing here. So basically, what you do is you you take your query, you copy it, you go to your text editor, you go to the end, paste it in, and then you give the name 
that you want for a sibling. All right. Again, we're being very politically correct here. Let me uh, resize the thing. We're being very politically correct here. Parent, or, excuse me, kid one, kid two. And then you give the neck, and then you put one of these on each of the lines afterwards here. And, uh, okay, now, it, notice interesting here. This is, see how the, the editor is bold-faced this right here? It kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, doesn't it? This is a cool thing about the editor in, in SWI Prolog. I've actually mistyped this. So I should have put kid here, right? And now that I put it there, it, it, it unbolded it, right? So if I take this out, it bolds it. Basically, anytime something is sticking out like a sore thumb here, this means you should take a look at it. Just take a look at it and see if you can do it, okay? So there we go. Let's compile it. And now, let's try sibling. I'm not going to type out kid. And there we go. There's the siblings in the database. All right. All right. So that's how it works. That's how it works. Now, notice um, we uh, it might get like a kind of a tiring after a while to talk about um, things in such a gender neutral way. Uh, suppose we want to do something like a father, right? So what's the definition of a father? Father is somebody who is begat you, right? That father, kid, right? But who is also male, right? So this might be a query that we uh, that we use here, right? So if we say something like this, father. Put our neck cut here, right? And then we see like this. Okay, but of course, in the database, we don't. We've we've done it very gender neutral now, right? We don't have any information about who's a male and who's a female here, right? And the editor, what the editor will do is it'll flag it in red. So it says, if if you see a red thing here, it says you haven't really specified anybody as being male here, right? So let's go back and. Uh, Let's go back and uh, specify uh, these guys as being uh, these guys as being male. Okay, so we have a uh, male Eleazar, male Ben, male Jacob. <laughs> kind of boring, right? Male, Joseph, all right, now that we have this, these males in here, we can go back down, and uh, notice the, the, the red male here is turned to black, which means we've actually defined some males, and this means that this, uh, you know, the black says we've defined some begats, the black male says we've, we've defined some males, which uh, basically tells us that this has some, some chance of succeeding, right? So let's uh, compile our buffer and try it out here. All right, do father, father, kid. All right, Eliezer, Methan, Methan, Jacob, Jacob, Joseph. All right, there's some more males in here, but that those are the only people we've actually declared as being males. So, like for example, let's go. Let's go find one here. Um, John the Baptist, for example. Right, John the Baptist was a male, but we haven't really. Um, declared him as being a male. So if we try to prove that male John. it don't I mean even though John the Baptist is a male, it won't be able to prove it because you haven't told it that it is John the Baptist, right? But if we say male X it's gonna find some male. If we've told it that Eliezer is a male, we told it that Method. Okay, this is a little bit too lightweight to call a homework, but here's an example that you might want to try just to uh, just to see if you understand today's uh, lesson. Okay, try adding predicates mother and father to the database. Uh, add facts to the database to describe whether somebody is male or female. And then a mother is just somebody who is female and begat a kid. It's kind of the same thing goes for father, okay? Let me know if you have any questions or anything. Be happy to help anybody. Thanks a lot. Bye.